Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, here we are on uh, Monday, 25th of February, 2019, for session 28 of Mastering the Four M's of Trading a webinar, part of the uh, Admiral Markets uh, webinar education series. Uh, my name is Paul Wallace. I'm a trader, analyst, and coach. I'm your guide here through the Mastering the Four M's of Trading webinars. As always, uh, before we uh, begin, we'll just start with a quick risk disclaimer. Trading with financial instruments offered by Admiral Markets carries a high level of risk which is not suitable for all investors due to their complex nature. Before entering into client agreement or making a transaction, please make sure to read the terms and conditions of our service. Consult a specialist if necessary to ensure you understand the risks involved in trading. This presentation and the accompanying video is for information and educational purposes only. Online education materials are developed by Admiral Markets and distributed by Admiral Markets Group Investment Firms for a global audience. Therefore, please take into consideration that the information in this session may not be suitable for everyone. As of August 2018, the regulation within the European Union differs for retail clients and professional clients. In our presentation, we use demo trading accounts where all clients could still use a high leverage in a risk-free environment. Before opening a live trading account, please consider the differences between retail and professional trading terms. Retail clients benefit from unlimited negative balance protection. Professional clients at Admiral Markets UK receive a compensation of account deficits with a maximum payout of £50,000 sterling as per our negative balance protection policy. There are uh, lots of good reasons to uh, to trade with uh, Admiral Markets. Uh, in particular, we can see that uh, two of their uh, most popular trading instruments, the DAX 30 and the Euro Dollar, offer very competitive uh, spreads during uh, main trading hours. They also offer the uh, MetaTrader 4 and 5 platform with their own special Admiral Markets Supreme Edition. Furthermore, uh, Admiral Markets are a, uh, a global brokerage with uh, uh, multiple uh, offices and uh, um, uh, businesses across the globe. If you have a uh, particular need to uh, discuss your, uh, your requirements with regards to regulation author authorization, then by all means get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to guide you through the, uh, the process. So as always, ladies and gentlemen, our expectations for the uh, for Mastering the Four M's of Trading webinar series is that it's for me to educate you about the Four M's of Trading so that you're able to go away and analyze any market and be ready to trade it and also help you raise your self-awareness about managing risk and about managing yourself. For yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, as always, I ask that you know we have a broad range of experience who joins us here in the room. Uh, we're under the time limitations of uh, 45 minutes, so we don't always have the uh, the time to go into the uh, topics with the depth that some people would like. But what we'll always do is try and focus on tools that you can use uh, tomorrow. And as always, if you're watching this uh, later on the uh, Admiral Markets YouTube channel or on the Facebook page, if you have any questions, as always, you know you can get in touch with your account representative, uh, and they'll be very happy to guide you. So, as always, the, uh, the mastering the uh, four M's of trading is uh, about being able to understand the, the four M's of trading, markets, method, money, and myself, and being able to sort of help uh, yourselves as traders in your own evolution to, to raise your self-awareness about how you are doing in terms of mastering those four particular M's. Uh, invariably, what we find is that, uh, you know, when a, a trader is managing those four M's very, very well, that's when they're in a little bit of a sweet spot and they tend to be trading at their very best. So what we're all trying to do is to help raise your self-awareness about those forums and help guide you to uh, make the best decisions that allows you to sort of uh, manage those forums and in fact master them uh, as quickly and as efficiently as you possibly can.
So, you know, those of you who have joined us throughout the sessions, we've talked about how, you know, we want to just sort of a simple 10 step plan that would allow new traders to effectively have almost like a, a little process to, to follow, a little routine to follow, because having good processes, having good routines as a trader, those are the things that start to uh, help develop really good uh, um, trader uh, skills. Uh, and those are the sort of things that help you, you know, basically make sure that you are mastering those four M's um, of trading. So we uh, devised a uh, simple 10 step plan which we've uh, been going through is our first uh, is our first sort of like building block and uh, you can go through the the previous sessions okay that are all on the admiral markets youtube channel or on the admiral markets facebook page uh, and you're able to go through them and, and see all of these particular areas in in particular greater detail so what we've always talked about is that you know whenever you look at a chart whenever you open a chart that your first step is to define the levels of support and resistance uh, upon that chart your next step is to go through and define if there is a trend. Step three is to see how price reacts at uh, those key support and resistance levels. Step four is <clears throat> when price is at those levels, look for particular price action signals. And also step five, be aware, is, is that part of a bigger chart pattern? What we've done this year so far in 2019 is, is the call of the sort of the back five in terms of step six, risk, right? Define your risk, accept it and stick to it. We did a few weeks on risk management. Step seven was about reward, the flip side of the coin, right? We were talking about do we have targets or do we use trailing stops? And it's about knowing your exit. Then we looked at step eight, it's about record. It's about keeping scrupulous records of your trade because that feeds into step nine, which was review, which is what we did last week, which is to help you improve your performance by debriefing your trade. By being able to do that, that's what helps you just get better trade by trade, day by day, week by week, month by month, quarter by quarter, year by year. That's about how the, we do that to, to basically become the best trader that we can do to help us master those four ends of, uh, of trading. That's, you know, that's what this, this uh, session is all about. And this is about, about providing you with a very, just a very simple process that you can follow to enable you to do that to the best of your abilities. So if you remember, you know, what we've talked about is, you know, we've uh, done a great deal on uh, a great deal on just recapping. OK, every session about the sort of the last major elements and realistically, the last few weeks, months has been very much about risk to reward. Right. OK, it's very much about understanding risk and understanding about how we manage our reward. If you remember, we talked about how, you know, I always believe in asymmetric reward to risk ratios. OK, what does that mean? That means that, you know, for example, you know, for every hundred pound I may risk in a trade, I'm looking to make 150, 200, 250, 400, 500 pounds of profit. OK, I want to have a high reward for my risk. And by doing that, OK, what it does is it helps me. OK, it helps me in my trading because it removes the need for me to be right on every single one of my trades. As I've said in the past, when people feel the need to be right, it tends to have an impact upon their decision making. Whereas when I uh, realize that because I have a good high asymmetric reward to risk ratio on my trades, I don't have to be right very often. Okay, and, that, and I find that that helps me. That actually takes the pressure off my shoulders. So you know, there I am. I'm doing the exact opposite of pretty much what everybody uh, everybody else is trying to do. Everybody else, all the new traders are all trying to to find you know exceptionally high hit rates because they are more uh, interested in being right and making money. Whereas me as a professional trader, okay, I'm more interested in making profits than being right my ego my ego doesn't need that stroking in that sense so um and, you know as i said i'm a big believer in asymmetric reward to risk ratios okay as i said because it takes the pressure off my shoulders you know and we, we talked about this and we put up this chart about you know looking at how you know if you have a you know if you have a, a normal risk to reward ratio of four to one or five to one well then really from you know from you only have to be have a win rate of you know 20 percent, 30 percent, and you're starting to be profitable okay and that makes as i said that takes the pressure off your shoulders that takes you know it makes things much much easier or well, it certainly does for me <clears throat> excuse me there might be other traders who'd look at that and you know would be you know, would be really find it very, very difficult to, to operate with a 30% hit rate, okay? But, you know, it's, it's about, as we've talked all the way through these series about, you know, mastering that four M's is about raising your own self-awareness and understanding yourself as a trader and how you can do that to the best of your ability. 
know, as I said, as I uh, as I have um, evolved and felt as traders, you know, I realised that actually I don't need to be I don't need to be right anywhere near as often as I uh, as I think I do to be able to be profitable in my business. So we actually we had a look at record, okay, all right. We talked about this question in the scene setting: is that was it possible for you your trading results for that session to be determined before you even switched on your computer? Which probably maybe left a few people sort of scratching their head to see understand if that was actually uh, uh, possible at all. But you know, but the reality is, you know, it is very possible, and we discussed why it was. We talked about how in terms of, you know, uh, where focus goes, you know, for an amateur trader, you know, they're very much focused on, you know, on the uh, the methods and the markets, all right? So, you know, when, when I see new traders, they always want to know where and how I, you know, where I, how I uh, sort of generate my buy and sell signals. They always want to know about my particular sort of, you know, my, um, my trading methods. That's, that's what, um, that's what's the, uh, that's what's the focus is on. Okay. That's what, um, that's what new amateur traders are, uh, are looking for. Whereas actually, you know, what we're looking at or trying to sort of get people to realize is that when you start to look at a, uh, a professional, um, traders uh, focus well you can see it's actually very very different all right it's very very different professional traders focus is much more on managing myself and on managing money they tend to have you know simple methods a couple of simple setups that you know work for them again and again and that's that's you know that's the way that uh, that's the way that works for them okay and they're very happy with that they don't they don't tend to um, sort of spend as much time on that as uh, as possible uh, and then uh, invariably what we have is that you know they, they have a little bit of knowledge in markets but as I said as you can see there the majority of their focus is on managing myself okay and as you as you trade and as you trade for a longer period of time you'll realize that that will actually become much more important to you as a uh, uh, as a trader itself so you know what we talked about is you know what can you actually learn from this is that uh, you know simply focusing on your trading method is not enough for yourself ladies, because trading is a performance activity and as a trader you need to develop a sort of a performance mindset a traders mindset to help you uh, 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 operate effectively and it's that mindset that uh, provides you with the mental toughness to be able to handle whatever happens in the market and that's the sort of major part of the fourth M of managing myself about developing that performance uh, developing that performance mindset what we talked about was, you know, to try and shift, okay, shift your focus in terms of, you know, don't focus on trading per se, in terms of, you know, the, you know where you're going to be buying and selling. Focus your time and energy on planning, all right? Planning for profit, that's what we talked about. So, you know, if your direction in that market is not clear, you don't really understand what's going on, then let price lead the way. That's it, you know, as it says there, you wouldn't fly a plane in zero visibility, you wouldn't scuba dive in zero visibility. So, you know, why would you trade in a, in a market where you're, Likelihood of profitability is zero because you know you're not really sure what's going on there because you're actually not you know you're not really uh, you haven't really made a plan for any profits there you're just effectively impulsively trading okay and that's um, that's what we want you to to, sh to to move away from. So you know what we also said was that you know some of the benefits of profit planning is that you know when you logically uh, plan your profit opportunities you know you you stop making. Uh, Stupid trades, okay. You have more uh, more control of your uh, of your trades, okay. You start to develop consistency in your trading. You become more confident as a as a trader, and that experience makes you a better trader. Now, unfortunately, it's not a, it's not an overnight thing, I'm afraid. But, you know, but it takes a little bit of time for you to do that. But by by committing to being a, a profit planner, all right, in terms of you know planning your planning your trades, okay, and trading your plan. Then what you will find is that you're in a position to to basically become a much much better trader, and that will stand you in good stead for the the length of your uh, trading career. <clears throat> so what we talked about was you know things that could help you with that was you know this was a great quote by Alexander Elder, which was you know show me a trader with good records and I'll show you a good trade. And it's a great quote, it's a very simple quote, but you know in all my years of uh, working with traders and you know on the sort of institutional side and the retail side. It is absolutely spot on. Show me a trader with good records and I'll show you a good trade. It's absolutely spot on. 
So, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, having types of records, you know, some basic simple records like a, a, a trader's Excel spreadsheet, a trade journal, which can help develop your equity curve. Uh, but also for traders, the importance of actually having a grade card for your trade, taking the time to do that. It's just, you know, spreadsheets, Excel, there, there are actually products out there these days that will help you and enable you to do that uh, all you know, for you uh, um, uh, already. But, but actually, you know, it doesn't actually take that much to, to set up and do it yourself. It's not that particularly difficult. With regard to the grade card, <coughs> excuse me. With regards to the grade card, it's about, you know, tracking and rating the performance of all your trades. So it is the important thing is that not only do we have an element for performance scoring, which is what most people would naturally do, but actually also we have a piece for execution scoring, right? How you execute it. And that is the thing, you know, me as a, as a, someone who mentors traders, someone who's worked in funds and such as that's what we need to focus on where, how well are you execute, executing your plan? That is what actually is the, the scores and the doors that we're looking for. And what we also talked about was filling in a trade journal for every one of your trades, <coughs> which would, you know, capture the details on what actually happened in the trade, but also maybe your feelings about the trade. Were you feeling nervous? Were you feeling confident? Were you feeling euphoric? Were you feeling scared? Okay. It's, you know, important for us to understand that because, you know, the, the more data we have that, the more we start to understand about what type of trader you are. And that itself is a, is a, is a crucial bit of uh, understanding, okay? The more you understand how you uh, view markets and how you trade markets, the, the better you are to be able to sort of uh, trade yourself in, in terms of uh, um, you know, delivering better performance as a trader. Uh, and then last week, what we talked about <clears throat> was, you know, step nine, okay, was about reviewing. Once you've been keeping good records, it's important for us to be able to go on and review those records, all right? That's the, uh, that was the, uh, the, the key element, okay? And we talked about how we go about that, what we need to do to make that uh, happen. We talked about how, you know, you know even though uh, at the end of every trading day, you need to review your trades, take your time to review your trades. Right. And then you do that again at the same event of every week and at the end of every month. Uh, and we know the reason we do that is because the more times you relive that trade, the, the deeper and harder the learning points come from it. That's what we're trying to do. Remember, this is all a little bit about, about process, it's about discipline, it's about self-awareness. And, and that comes from an element of repetition. Skill is a drill, as you'll hear me often say to traders, skill is a drill. So it is important, really important for yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. End of every day, review your trades and at the end of every week and at the end of every month, okay? And what will happen is that will increase your uh, uh, the, your sort of rate of learning exponentially, and that's that's what I'm trying to, to get across to you. And then with that, you know, you can start to use the data within your Excel spreadsheet to work out some of KPIs. We talked about that, key performance indicators, trying to understand what your general average, you know, win-loss ratios are. What's your average risk-to-reward ratio on, uh, on trades? And once we have those kind of two bits of data, then we can start to see what, if any, uh, level of expectancy you have. Do you have negative expectancy or positive expectancy where we would expect, you know, to, to see uh, that particular trading method uh, returning profit on a, on, a, on a certain basis? But also, you know, with by reviewing all of that data, you start to identify some of the trends within yourself as a trader. Okay. Most Private traders or trend following traders, and within that, you know, it's not uh, not unsurprisingly, is that you will find that you will you yourself will also have developing trends within your in the way you operate in your trading business. We also looked at um, some of the uh, useful KPIs that we find out there, looking at things like you know the the number of the trades we placed, what is you know the number and or the percentage of our winners versus losers, what's the size of our average winner, what's the size of our average uh, loser, uh, you know how long do we actually stay in a trade, what's our average time in a trade. That in itself, the data and that can be quite fascinating because it'll allow you to to see if there are 
if you know you might actually want to use a time stop loss not only just let's say a technical stop loss but it might be possible that a time stop loss actually um, uh, helps you you might find that after you know most of your trades if you're an intraday trader you know most of your trades go profitable within 20 minutes and if they don't well then they tend to fail in which case you've just found out some uh, fantastic data about your own particular trading style that would allow you to sort of develop and allow your plan to evolve to make it as, as you know as more effective and more efficient so you know understanding kind of that kind of data is particularly useful also things like you know number of longs versus shorts so you know I, I know myself that you know two-thirds of my trades are, are short trades I tend to find to see shorting opportunities much much easier okay that's you know I have spent time reflecting upon that there are many reasons why that um, why that happens but it's uh, it's a case of you know I have um, you know learned over time that uh, that yeah I particularly really like to sort of uh, short trades and you know I'm actually not that much more profitable as a as a short trader you know I'm looking at my results but I just seem to find those setups much much easier they sort of tend to leap off the uh, leap off the chart at me and so you know I'm just working with myself rather than fighting myself And all that detail basically comes towards helping, as I said, try and identify, you know, do we have positive or negative expectancy? And that's something that's not always talked about. Lots of, you know, amateur traders will talk about their hit rate. OK, they want to talk about how often they're right. And you know, we talked about that a few slides back. But, you know, there's more to it than that. OK, there's more to it than that. There's more about understanding what is your percentage of your winners? What's the, the size of your average winner? And how does that stack up against the, you know, the percentage of trades that loses trades? And what's the average? size of your if you're losing trade okay by being able to start to understand that those, those kind of relationships you're in a position to start to identify do you have positive expectancy or not So um, we talked about, you know, what you can do is, you know, if you're a private trader, is that you can you can start to do things like writing uh, an actual performance report and uh, and how that will actually help you, right? And you know, I do that myself in terms of just trying to every month write a report so that gives you your figures on you know your particular trading, so you're getting a, you're getting a good idea of what you're how you're operating your trading business. And this is the kind of another theme that has come out, you know, time and time again is about trying to run this as a as a particular uh, uh, business and once you start to as i say to do this week on week month on month you start to um see developing trends within your own trading business and that is a i find that fascinating absolutely or not fascinating really you know kind of um amazing to see in terms of you know what the kind of data was showing me how i was able to make better choices okay based on the data i had and that, how that helped me going forward in my uh, in my own trading You know, not only can you do that overall for your business, but you can do it by actual individual strategy or by individual trading method, all right? And you can start to work out when does a particular trading method actually work. Not all of them work all of the time, all uh, of the year. It might be that you find that some, you know, some some of your methods might only work in particularly sort of trending markets. Others may only work in particular, let's say, consolidation or reversal markets. And so it's about understanding, you know, when is the uh, the best time excuse me the best time to employ that that particular trading method and you only get to learn that by actually you know by keeping good records and then by you know by going through and reviewing them so to be able to extract and draw out as much of the data as possible from um, from the session So yeah, you know, we talked about how you know when you you know you sort of you know trading like that and reviewing it. Okay, the the kind of rule of thumb people talk to you about is you know it's either going to take you ten thousand hours, seven years to become an expert in anything, not just trading. But one of the ways you can help speed that process up, all right, one of the things you can help sort of uh, um, make that time a little bit shorter is by using constant debriefing by constantly reviewing the the work that you've done. Every time you relive a trade, all right, you are cementing the learning. And that's what you know, we were talking about earlier. That's what I want you to take away, ladies and gentlemen. Every time you relive a trade, you're cementing the learning, you're going through it, and you're making it clearer in your own mind. 
what we said is you have to remember is that, you know, losers see record keeping as a bit of a waste of time, all right? They, they find it a bit dull. They find it a bit unexciting. They don't, they don't see the value in it, okay? They just want to, you know, sort of get knocked about, have a few impulsive trades, and I think that's all it takes. Whereas the difference is professionals see it as an investment, right? It's an investment that develops and improves performance. And if you're developing and improving performance, well, then the likelihood is that you're also then going to effectively you're going to effectively, you know, uh, have a, an improvement in your P&L also. You know, most importantly, you know, it you know, helps you hold a mirror up to yourself, okay? It tells you how you're actually doing, which can be different from how you think you're doing, all right? And you know, it's important that you understand the uh, the true nature of where you are as a trader, all right? And because, you know, once you know that, once, the, once that's clear for you to grasp, well, then, you know, you're in a position to, to always improve and always to evolve and grow and become better as a, as a trader day by day. So we talked about this, another good, another good quote from uh, Mr. Elder, right? Keeping good records is the single most important contribution to your success. If you maintain scrupulous records, review them and learn from them, your performance will improve. And he, he is absolutely spot on there. He's absolutely, totally right there, okay? So, you know, I would be suggesting that to everybody, just make sure you keep those records, okay? It will, it will not be in vain, okay? It will help you enormously. It's one of the most important things that you can do, uh, and I guarantee that it will pay you dividends in your, in your own uh, trading journey and trading business. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a little bit of a sore throat this afternoon, so apologies for my uh, coughing. So that brings us on to sort of step 10, all right? Step 10, which is repeat. And step 10, that to repeat, is all about helping you build consistency and discipline. What I found over the years, ladies and gentlemen, is it's, it's very difficult to be consistent without being disciplined. And it's very difficult to be disciplined without being consistent. The two go uh, hand in glove. They work well together. Uh, and it's uh, it's something that all traders are striving towards, towards achieving consistency and discipline. And you find it much, much easier to achieve when, you know, when you're following just a very simple process, okay? A very simple checklist or step-by-step -step, um, plan that allows you to provide, you know, consistent approach to, to the way you trade with markets. What I say is, you know, when all said and done, you know, professional traders have rigid rules and flexible expectations. Amateur traders have flexible rules and rigid expectations. And it is it is spot on. It is spot on. All right. As intra trading, especially intraday trading is about having, you know, it's mostly rules based and it's about doing that to, to ensure that you uh, keep yourself safe and you're in very fast, fluid um, uh, markets. But with that, it's about having flexible expectations, all right? Anything can happen when you trade the markets. You know, you, you, you know, you don't decide when you get paid, okay? The market decides when you get paid. It's just your job. It's your job to sort of put the trade on and manage risk. Whereas what you'll find is <clears throat> new traders, amateur traders, they're the opposite way. They have very flexible rules and they have very rigid expectations about what they expect to get from their trading. They have flexible rules and you know, it allows them to be impulsive. It allows them just to actually trade however, whenever they want. Okay, it allows them to just chase price in a market in a hope that they are uh, going to make a, uh, a quick a quick little bit of profit. You know, they are truly sort of impulsive traders. But, you know, with that, having those flexible rules, you know, they have in their mindset a bit of a rigid expectation about what they think they deserve from, from trading, about what they think the market owes them. You know, and this one thing we've learned is that, you know, the, the market owes you uh, nothing. And, and the market, you know, it might be irrational. You know, you might not understand its moves, but it's never wrong. OK, the market is the market. And so, you know, it's your job as a trader. It's your job as a trader to get in alignment with the market. It's not the market that's going to get in alignment with you. It doesn't, uh, sadly, it doesn't work like that, ladies and gentlemen, all right? But, you know, one of the ways you can do that, as I said, is by having rigid rules and flexible expectations. You know, that's what we try to get the message across to, to traders to have rigid rules and flexible expectations. And what I always say to traders is we'll take a look back at how you uh, operate presently. Do you have rigid rules and flexible expectations? Or do you have flexible rules and rigid expectations? All right, uh, you know, that's a very quick, easy way to to work out you know which which side of the coin you're uh, operating from. 
you know, and I talk about this, you know, in, in terms of the work, the one-to-one -one work that I have done with traders over the years, right? Most of that coaching work is simply this. I'm looking to turn amateurs with a hobby into professionals with a business. And, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's a simple line, but it's, it's, it's absolutely spot on, okay? It's absolutely spot on. You're either an amateur with a hobby or a professional with a business. The interesting thing is that is that you know that is a decision that you can make. Okay, it doesn't require God-given talents. It doesn't require that you know a sort of uh, innate ability. It's something that you know you can choose. Okay, you can choose to have a professional approach to how you do you know engage with your trading business. And that's fully on within your remit. And what you know, what we uh, sort of, what we sort of see, as I said, you know, one of the, a lot of the work is, is you know, about helping people make that transition, okay, transition from being an amateur with a hobby into professional with a business. If you think about it, most of us have hobbies, okay. I don't know, maybe you like to, I don't know, maybe you like to play golf, maybe you like to do video games, maybe you like to, to go hill walking, maybe you like to go sailing, maybe you know, I don't know, you like to go to music concerts, okay, or watch uh, go to the cinema to watch films. You know, we all have our hobbies, we all have our elements that that we enjoy. But as a general rule, okay, we we, we expect to spend money on our hobbies. All right, think about it. We expect to spend money on our hobbies. Right, but we expect to make money from our businesses, and that's that's you know that kind of crucial mindset difference for when it comes to trading. Right, as I said, you know we expect to spend money on our hobbies, but we expect to make money from our businesses, and it is you know part of that is about just making sure that you are operating with the with the correct business you know correct business mindset. That's what we're actually looking for because that is the thing that will help you uh, uh, trade the best over the longer period. So how do we actually do that? How do we actually build consistency and discipline? How do we do that and repeat that? How do you become a professional with a business? How do you build you know, consistency and discipline? How do you achieve all of those things? Okay, well, once again, it's just quite, it's relatively simple in terms of what is required, but you know, it's, a, it's about how you execute it that, that, makes the, um, that makes the difference. You know, and it's, uh, um, it's, you know, it's a, uh, an interesting way, to, uh, interesting way to sort of, to look at it, if you uh, if you recall, okay, pretty much since you know from session one, what I have talked about is, um, you know, how you uh, I've always stressed you have a you know simple little plan. You plan your trade, you trade your plan, you manage your risk, all right? And we'll talk about that now. And uh, you know, in, if you ever see me talk anywhere, if you hear me sort of talk on YouTube or on trading conferences or whatever, you hear me go always going on about just plan your trade, trade your plan manage your risk okay and the, the reason i'm very big about that is because those are the three things that you can control there is nothing to stop you you can we've talked about being a profit planner you can plan your trades then once you know what your plan is you know you have to execute it okay and be able to be very clear to execute you know where your entry is and you know where your exits are and then finally it's about you know making sure that you manage your risk right making sure that Remember those rules we talked about when it came to talk about risk? Those first simple rules were that, you know, you always live to fight another day and you always know where your exit point is. That, that is absolutely crucial. It doesn't matter whether you're a, a one-minute scalper or, you know, you're trading monthly charts in your pension, right? It, doesn't, it shouldn't make any particular difference. Plan your trades, trade your plan, manage your risk. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, that's what I'm looking for good traders to do. And that is what good traders do. That's how they actually conduct and, and operate themselves. You know, and it's, it is, uh, it's one of the things that helped me make a, you know, a turnaround even many, many years ago when I was uh, first starting out was, was, you know, just, I had to redefine what success meant to me as a trader. Uh, and, uh, so, you know, in the past, uh, you know, I've been very, uh, let's say outcome focused in terms of, uh, in terms of you know what I was uh, what I was focusing on in terms of what you know I was looking to to achieve from trading, and actually what I realised was that I needed to, to shift my uh, shift my focus away from you know what uh, kind of uh, you know fabulous sort of lifestyle I was going to you know have or envisage for myself, and actually I needed to to focus on the process of trading. Right? I need to focus on the process of trading. Right? And what I realised was that if I planned my trade, traded my plan, and managed my risk then that trade was a success, all right, regardless of the outcome of the trade, because, you know, I couldn't, I can't control the outcome of a trade. Once a trade is triggered in the market, anything can happen. 
But before that trade is triggered, I, you know, I can plan my trade, trade my plan and manage my risk. And those are the things I could do. And then basically anything that um, anything that happened was, you know, if I, as long as I followed those three simple rules, that made that a successful trade. And that's uh, and that's, you know, that's what helped me. OK, many, many years ago, it's just to redefine what success meant and actually to redefine success as basically focusing on planning my trades, trading my plan, managing my risk. That's, you know, absolutely crucial. So, you know, how do you how do you do that? How do you break that down into something that you can actually work and, and effectively uh, um, follow? Well, you know, there's there's two ways about looking at that. You have a, a tactical trading plan, which is, you know, how you engage with the markets on a day to day basis. So the tactical trading plan, which uh, lo and behold, you know, that is what we have focused on for the last, you know, 20 odd sessions. Really, the, the sort of simple 10 steps. That is your tactical trading plan. That's it there in a nutshell. That's it there building up. Okay, just, you know, that's how you do that. That's how you help yourself engage with the markets on a day-to-day -day basis in a very simple, <coughs> robust, okay, a very uh, uh, almost you know, simple way to do it so that you're able to build consistency and discipline in the way you operate. But what you'll also need is, you know, you will need also a strategic business plan, how you, how you plan to run and build your business. <laughs> That doesn't need to be, you know, hundreds of pages long. You know, it can be actually a few pages long, okay? But it, it should put down all the elements that are required to, to effectively uh, suffice for a strategic business plan within the uh, sort of football management business. Or, you know, and it would do it for the same with, a, you know, you're in a trading business also. I've always uh, liked this quote from uh, Sun Tzu, which is uh, literally about how uh, strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before uh, defeat. And it is absolutely right. You know, I've seen, um, you know, lots of, uh, you know, in the professional world, I've seen lots of sort of institutional traders, you know, who are institutional investors who have a strategy, but they have no tactics. Uh, and then alternatively, I have, you know, seen lots of private retail traders who have lots of tactics, but they have no strategy. Uh, and then wonder why they're just, uh, as it says there, is the noise before defeat. So it's a, it's a very simple, uh, very simple quote there from Sun Tzu, the, uh, the legendary Chinese general. But it is absolutely spot on and it is very, very much prevalent against their many within the, uh, within their trading journey. So, with, as for strategic business plan, well, we, you know, we touched upon this a little bit, you know, uh, in one of the earlier sessions. But, you know, we were talking about, well, why bother with one for trading? Well, remember, it's about being a professional with a business, all right? And all sustainable, profitable businesses have a strategic business plan. It's, it's actually, it's crucial, it's key, it doesn't matter whether you are Apple or whether you're Microsoft or Google. All sustainable, profitable businesses have a strategic business plan. So why would you bother with one? Because without it, traders start to struggle. Traders struggle with it. They actually might have overconfidence, right? Or they might have the need for variety. They get bored doing the same thing. So they have a need for variety and they go off the ranch. They have a need for excitement, okay? They need to be trading. What does that mean? Is that, you know, they, they need to feel that uh, actually if they're not pulling the trigger on trades, that they're not actually engaged with the markets. Even though you know the market doesn't really care then you know, whether you feel like you need to be trading, the truth of the matter is you know it's a performance environment and you just need to be ready to to put your uh, trades in when the moment is right. But you know by sort of spending the time to create a very simple strategic business plan, it helps you. It helps um, traders sort of avoid those struggles, those uh, simple struggles there. So, you know, that strategic business plan is, is uh, you know, is absolutely crucial. It's absolutely key because it allow it stops people, as I said, from, you know, that kind of over trading very often. Uh, there's, a, there's a photo of a gentleman called Nicholas Darvas. Uh, some of you may be aware of him. You may have read his book. I think his book is called How I Made $2 Million in the Stock Markets from back in the sort of 40s and 50s. There's a little interesting aside, okay, that uh, he actually was a, a dance choreographer who traveled the world, okay, with his dance troupe doing, putting on shows, and he got paid for for uh, one of his uh, gigs in, in actual shares, and uh, that got him started interested in share trading, and he actually did quite well of it. You know, even though he was traveling all over the country, all over the world, uh, it was the 1950s, I think early 50s, before uh, 
uh, you know, before sort of modern uh, uh, electronic communication devices. Uh, and yet he was doing very well for himself as a trade. And so what he decided to do was to give up the uh, being a dance choreographer. He gave all that up and he basically used his money to, to get himself an office, swanky little office just right behind uh, um, Wall Street, okay, uh, with all the latest technology the day, had the ticket tapes and stuff. Uh, and actually, it turned out to be a, a terrible, terrible sort of uh, um, a gambit for him because actually his trading sort of deteriorated. And the reason it deteriorated is he was over trading, he was overconfident. He had, he, you know, because he was very close to the action, he thought he needed to be trading more and more and more. And actually, that wasn't his uh, best way of trading at all. So, after a sort of, uh, I think it was a six to 12 month period of trying to that and realizing it wouldn't work. He then basically sort of uh, uh, left and went back to his went back to his old job of uh, of you know being a dance choreographer. Went back to his old plan of how he uh, traded and invested in markets, and that was then when he uh, he, he generated two million dollars in the uh, in the stock market. So you know, as I said, it's it's a case of you know you need to get that plan in place, all right? Certainly on the strategic side, because it's a it's a case that uh, you uh, you know it's, you're trying to do your best to help yourself by effectively giving you some simple uh, simple uh, plans that allow you to sort of operate with uh, consistency and discipline. So when you put together your strategic business plan, how do you create it? Well, it should include all those following me. And I think we've been through a few of these, you know, before a good few months ago and stuff. It should include, you know, you know who you are and what's your purpose for trading. What are your trading goals and, and what are the markets, instruments and timeframes that you're going to trade? We'll talk about what the tools you're going to use, what are the routines, all right, which is what people want to see. Also understanding, you know, how you uh, plan to envisage managing risk, what's your money management style, what, are you, what if any contingency plans do you have, you know, what's your uh, trading system like, how is it, uh, how is it working at the moment, uh, you know, and uh, just making sure that at the bottom is always recording and reviewing your trades, all right, you know, you know, you'll know I'm on about it all the time because I think it is just crucially, crucially important. So, you know, as I said, uh, amateurs see strategic business plans as a waste of time, whereas professionals see it as an investment that develops and improves performance. And that's why I want you, I want you to go away from today with actually basically recognizing you know, what's the uh, recognize the importance of a strategic business plan, also recognizing how you know, we've been creating a tactical trading plan. You know, and, and just to have a little question of word with yourself, you know, do you have one of both of them at the moment, all right? And if you don't, well, I'd ask you just to make a commitment to creating them going forward. It is well worth the, uh, the time and effort. It will help you enormously. You know, and if you uh, want to just ask you that, so that simple question, are you an amateur with a hobby or are you a professional with a business? So um, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. What we're going to cover over the, the next few sessions and stuff is, you know, well, we've looked at uh, we've looked at you know the sort of risk management, trade management, money elements. We're going to do some extra sessions on the myself in terms of managing performance, how you recover from a slump, what you need to do to get better as a trader, because I think that's valid for for everybody. Uh, and then on occasion, we'll look at the odd sort of shorter term trading uh, idea that you'll be able to. Uh, be able to sort of engage with and learn from. But yeah, and we'll look a little bit about, as I say, shorter term trading and, and advanced trading tactics. So, as always, ladies and gentlemen, just you know, ensure that you are uh, looking to, to manage those forums of trading, markets, method, money, and myself. Check that they're all in alignment, and then if not, don't expect uh, outsized returns, uh, and make sure that you consistently uh, monitor those four areas. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's the end of our session for today. I hope you found that useful. I hope it gave you a lot of uh, food for thought. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, either today or if you're watching this on demand, you can get in touch with your account representative at Admiral Markets by calling the London number there, 020 7726 4003, dropping them an email at hello at admiralmarkets.com. You can uh, watch this session and previous sessions on the uh, youtube.com forward slash Admiral Markets page. Or uh, look at it on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Admiral Markets Global. Well, it's been uh, my pleasure to have you uh, join me for the session uh, today. I hope you said you found it, uh, you found it uh, useful and it helped you out a little bit. Uh, as always, I wish you the very best success in your own trading. If you want to look at a little bit of the uh, real time trading, well, you know, I do the Tuesday morning London 10 a.m real-time daily uh, trading ideas there. And so uh, um, yeah, by all means, look to, to come and join us and you'll be happy to uh, 
sort of hear us uh, good traders and client lists all uh, have a little uh, conversation about which is the, uh, the best currency at the moment. Once again, thanks for joining me. I look forward to speaking to you soon and uh, I wish you the very best of success in your uh, trading endeavours for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Phil says, thanks, Paul. Great help. Yep, you're very kind, Phil. Thank you. Look forward to seeing speaking to you soon.